Hey friends, how are you? Uh, this is Tamara Rubin, TamaraRubin.com, Let'sSafeMama.com. It is some time. What time is it? The clock's over there. I can't see from here. Anyway, it's in the afternoon. I believe it is April 10th. Yes, that's it. It's about 3 o'clock. And I'm um, addressing questions via video because it's a little bit easier for me given uh, how complicated it's been for me to write recently since my accident, since I broke my leg. So I have this, um, this is what I'm showing you today. It's in a baggie. I'm going to try and grab it in a way that I can show it to you. There we go. Hold on. <clears throat> I'm going to hold it by, oops, I was going to hold it by the string. Does this look familiar to anybody? I couldn't really hold it up to the light. It's a little sailboat and it's um, meant to hang in a window. It's got a uh, lead lines holding it together. It's stained glass. And it, it's a really dark blue. You can't really see. I don't think you can see in the for the sail and the, the hull of the boat is, is red. And I thought it'd be fun to test this using um, a lead check swab and then also to tell you what the XRF test results are for this. So I'm cracking the lead check swab, opening it to make sure the contents is yellowish. That means it's activated. It's a chemical chemical reagent. It's generally meant to test for lead and paint. However, it might test for lead and other things every now and then. And in an instance like this, when the object is basically covered in a strip of solid lead, it should uh, react pretty quickly. So I'm holding it with the baggie and I'm going to drop the end of the thing is white right now. I'm going to drop some of the yellow liquid onto the item and, and rub it. And that's what it looks like when you test actual near pure lead with a lead check swab. It turns red immediately. And it's kind of a bright pinkish red um, that you can see. Okay, so when this was tested with an XRF instrument, it came in at about 970,000 parts per million lead in the coating, in the, in the exterior. And the remaining bit was a chunk of antimony, which is also toxic and causes cancer in rats and um, disrupts biological symptoms. And that was about, I believe, about 11,000 parts per million. I'll be doing a post on the blog about this, but these things are generally quite toxic and dangerous and shouldn't be handled. And they actually create lead dust if they're left sitting on a windowsill for an extended period of time. And I, I definitely recommend not having these in your home, regardless of how sentimental they might be. I mean, you find these at thrift stores, antique stores for two or three dollars each. Really, they're trash and they should be thrown in the trash and treated as such. Um, they're just too dangerous because they're exciting for a child to play with. They're brightly colored. They're shiny. They're interesting. Um, they move and catch sunlight. So kids are attracted to them in a, in a way that's not okay because you don't want your kid touching this or playing with this and then, for example, eating an apple or something afterwards. So we're going to um, put this aside for now. And then I just wanted to let you know that please check out the links with the video. I will include some relevant links here um, in the comments on YouTube. And next up, uh, next video, we're going to talk about uh, wooden toys and... I have quite a few examples of wooden toys that have been sent to me or that were purchased by me over the years. And I will be discussing that in my next video. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Tamara Rubin, Lead Safe Mama, LeadSafeMama.com. And again, avoid anything like this in the stained glass realm, especially including uh, your doors. If you have a stained glass window on your door that your children can access, definitely reconsider that and consider putting a sheet of plexiglass or other protective barrier in front of it until you can replace that or get a new door. Okay, thanks for being here. Let's safe mama.com. Bye bye.